Fairfield. So I took this at night in the alley off the north side of the square, and it was just one of those serendipitous moments where I happened to see it, and the moment I saw it, I just clicked it just like that. And it's one of those moments of blind inspiration. There was no thinking about it or looking for different angles. I did that after this picture, and none of those were as good as this first image that I took just on the spur of the moment. Beautiful. Cool. And then um, similar, where I got lucky, is this picture here. This was taken in Maine. It was cast in Maine. And it was at sunset, and all of that is natural light. There's no um, filter, nothing, all natural light. And I just got lucky. I was driving up the road and saw a pier. Okay, we'll do. It was just pure luck. And then my third picture, also a good bit of luck. This was taken in Peru on market day in Pisac, which is in the sacred valley of the Incas. And this woman is an indigenous woman in uh, Peru. They call them the Quechuan people. And in her shawl, which is tied around her neck, she's carrying, as you can see, her child, and probably also potatoes, bread, <laughs> and that's what they do. They all have these shawls. 
And I don't know what she's looking at, but the children are looking at the same thing. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Took at a machine shop here in town. I just spent a couple hours roaming around this guy's uh, friend's machine shop and just taking pictures. That red one is mine there also. Yeah. Well, someone was asking earlier where was this taken? It was taken actually in Provincetown, Mass, on Cape Cod. I went there, f uh, went to Boston for my son's wedding and uh, we had some assignments from the class. <laughs> that week, so I had to scramble and get some pictures taken. So I probably uh, filled my camera with pictures that weekend, aside from the wedding. Nice. And uh, that portrait down there of Tierra is mine. One of the and all of them are like the door closed. Yeah, those are fun. So you've got to pick challenging, sound. but fun. We had portraits of the models under all kinds of conditions. And, uh, there's another fascinating one over here. That's one I took. It's north of Mount Pleasant. I think I probably stopped there three or four times to take pictures, and that was one morning when the sun was behind me. And uh, that one's from campus. That's the uh, solar panel building, battery building at the Sustainable Living Center. I have people ask me, what's it, what's it about? What is it? <laughs> and then my last one is uh, that one right there from the Snake Alley Criterium in Burlington. Wow. Yeah, we went down there with a um, field trip with Carolyn last June, I think it was June or July, and uh, spent the day down there taking pictures of races and practicing the things that she had told us about. So it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I'm Dawn McKay, and I've taken a couple of Carolyn Waxman's photography workshops, and I love them. I learn an immense amount each time I take them. <laughs> so I have two photographs. This one is a mosque in Tunisia and uh, I was on a trip and never expected to be able to go through a tour of a mosque and we happened to have a tour guide that evidently had some special uh, you know clearance and he took us inside and this very little, little doorway that you see at the end of the dark hallway is a man-sized doorway. And it just opens up like a kind of little gateway. And the rest of that dark spot is this massive wall. And, and it, it was just such a mind-boggling thing to see at the other end of the mosque and that it was really put down to that small little thing, which was actually a real size door. So it, it was a beautiful, beautiful building and it is just very extraordinary architecture. It's really, really wonderful and I felt really blessed to be able to have been inside and, and welcomed in. And it just so happened that on that day was the day that the fighting broke out in Tunisia and we were leaving that port and uh, they closed the port behind our cruise ship, but I just felt doubly blessed. It was like, whew, exactly, I was so... Anyway, very grateful. It's a beautiful, beautiful country, and I was so grateful to have been there. So it's fun to be able to show a piece of that to the world. I feel really blessed. And then my other so, uh, photograph is way over here. This is um, in Switzerland, and that is Lake Lucerne, and this is Veve, Switzerland, um, and this fork is actually a sculpture that's in the, the lake, and um, 
it was such a surprise. We came around this corner and we were just walking on this very, very many, many miles long walkway, enjoying the water, and we saw this fork sticking out. It was so bizarre. So it turns out that it's actually a culinary um, school and museum that is positioned right in front of on the waterfront there, and that's sort of their marker, I guess, if you will, but it's this big steel fork. It's probably, really, it's probably about, oh, I would say 15 to 20 feet tall, sticking out of the water, so it was, it's just a fun thing. Looks like it's Photoshop, but it's not. <laughs> so, so, that's my story. <laughs> Uh, I, we hit back. Yeah. One on the end, there. Yeah. So you got Andy here. This is Channel 9. How are you? Hello. Good. Introduce yourself. And talk. Oh, yeah. My name's Andy Cousins, and uh, I've taken some of Carolyn's classes for a couple of years now. And I've actually only been taking photography for a couple of years. A couple of friends of mine got me out with a point and shoot to begin with and then I realized that I didn't have any technical skills at all so I was kind of, you know, they'd be talking about all these different things, aperture and shutter speed and stuff like that so I figured I needed to do some background on it and figure out what was going on so I uh, found out about Carolyn's courses and started taking them. It's been a lot of fun. You get a lot of different people as you can see with all the different things in here there's a lot of different people so it's been very exciting to take her classes and stuff. Beautiful so far. Yeah. Tell me about yours. Uh, this one is a nighttime photo that I took. Uh, we had had a class um, at night and it had been raining and I was on my way home and I crossed across Highway 34 downtown and, and realized that I saw the lights reflecting, reflecting off the water and it was really cool so I stopped and uh, got my camera out and actually braced it because it's a low light uh, condition. I braced it against the sill of my car and took a couple of shots and this is one of them. Yeah, so. It was fun. so you want to see them all? Or? Yeah, yeah, might as well. Okay, sure. And next on over here. Um, I have a couple friends, uh, Bill and Jim, who are the people that introduced me to it, and their their whole philosophy is urban style, where you just pull into a town or, or go to an event and just walk around and take photography. So this one is an uh, infrared photography, in, infrared photograph I took at Old Thresher's Reed uh, last. Uh, last uh, September so that's uh, it was exciting Jim has uh, had a camera so I just borrowed it from him and I've been using it ever since it's a lot of fun so what was that in infrared what is that uh, well it's uh, it's a red spectrum so when you look at it if you can see the tree in the background I don't know if you can pick it up with your camera but it tends to give it a kind of a a surreal kind of quality so it kind of looks like snow and then kind of gives it if you look at it just right it kind of gives you an old kind of feel to it so it looks like a vintage photo so exactly. that's kind of what I like about it. And is that a uh, function on the camera or? Yeah 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 actually the, you, uh, the, you convert the sensor to an infrared sensor so it's, it's, it's neat yeah it's a lot of fun so they use it in forensics too you know yeah. Um, this one uh, was a low light photography uh, session that we had with Carolyn and uh, I was actually running late for it so I was trying to juggle all these different things on my camera and basically put it on a tripod and uh, she had a guy she was actually standing behind him with a wand, with a couple light wands, going like this. And so you, you, you do a long shutter speed. So this one was probably about, oh, maybe uh, five seconds. You know, it was a long, long shutter speed. So you, obviously you get the trace from it. And then there's uh, 
I did it really simply. There's a, a free photo software called Picasa. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but they have a feature on it, which is it's kind of a cartoon thing. So I just converted it to that cartoon one, and that's that's what I ended up with for that one. Um, this one. And this one, I think, is the last one I've got. The thing is, is from Columbus Junction. They've got a, you know, somebody built a, a sculpture with with milk cans, and I decided to. I was looking at it, and I was going, well, what would make an interesting shot with this? And and I got down low. I crouched down low and shot up, and so uh, this is what I ended up with. And it, it's kind of <laughs> it's a cute one. So. That's that's what I ended up with that one. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> cool. Thank you. I just created my own black um, studio with fabric and then um, I had my subject and I did a slow, a long exposure and I just flashed a light three different times and that's what it came out to be. So it's not it Photoshop. It's, it's not Photoshopped at all. It's the long exposure that we learned in yeah. class. Yes. In the we workshop. We learned that in the workshop. How to do that. And what settings to use. And then I just put it on a tripod. The camera was on a tripod. And I just was holding a light in one hand. And pressing the button of the camera on the other hand. And I counted for eight seconds. One, two, three, Click. One, two, three, four, five, six, Click. And that's, I was amazed. <laughs> it's it's beautiful. It's absolutely exquisite. And I just love the way the hand comes all the way out here. Just with beautiful composition. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to talk about your other one? Just right across. I'm over here. Yeah. Yeah. So this one was in the same same space, and I had um, one of those those rope lights. You know, they're just like lit up for Christmas or something. And um, for this one, I think she, I just had her hold it. She wrapped it around her head, and she just hold it, and we counted. It was like a four or five second exposure, and that was it. Beautiful. Yeah. So. That was just, I had this black background, I just created my own little, I had a, you know, a room divider and I just hung up the fabric and, and I just, I just kind of built my own little studio to do these in my basement and I turned up all the lights and then we just were playing with, so the other one had an artificial light that I clicked but this one, it was, that was the light, the rope light was the light. Yeah. And yeah, four or five seconds. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. So, uh, this one is by my house. There's, it's a two second exposure. Most people are blurry at that, but if you're really good at it, you can hold it steady for up to a few seconds. And that one's kind of boring. It is a cat. That's it. I am terrible at this. Oh, yay! This is at the Devon Port Air Show. That's it. Uh, is there something particular that you want? Because I'm really, really bad at this. Oh, you can just talk about your process. For process. What, what uh, classes you were studying before? Uh, well, this what one. Going through in class? Basic, basically, this wasn't part of a class. It was right after one. Basically, with an air show, you just hold down the shutter and hope you get a good one. Uh, you're, 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 
you're mocking me. <laughs> so this is Grace. Uh, with this one, I was actually lying on the floor and everyone was laughing at me. So, and now a, a good technique with the models is because they, they tend to freeze up on camera. I found accidentally blinding yourself with a flash once or twice gets them to really loosen up. Nice. Yeah. Pretty much. And this is Josie. Uh, now this one, she won't let you take pictures of her. She, you know, strikes this different face. So this one was when I'm, you know, I'm a hundred feet away. And she doesn't know I'm taking pictures of her. Oh. Um, Kathleen? Hi. Talk about your photo. Um, this, this is one of, it's not my technically best, but one of my favorites. Um, it's a, a girl who just graduated from the Hershey School last year and um, was one of the several models that we photographed while we were learning how to part take portraits in different ways, like with different lighting in different places. So I was pleased with this mostly because of her expression. It seemed to be more um, um, es essentially her, I thought. So that's why I, I chose this one. It's the only one I have in the show, though. So. But but um, Carolyn's workshop is really, really great for anyone, whether they're amateur or professional or just beginning, because we all learn from each other, you know, and um, that's fun. So thank you. All of, all of these photos that I entered uh, were taken in Peru on a trip, a uh, travel photography trip. And uh, this one was in uh, the little town that's just where you jump off to Machu Picchu. And we were eating lunch at a little sidewalk cafe, and it was raining. And uh, I saw this, there are no cars in this town. It's on a very steep hill. They don't allow any motor vehicles. So everything's done with wheelbarrows, carts, and it's very steep. So this man was pushing this wheelbarrow full of, I don't know, potatoes or something. They're really big on potatoes there. Up the hill in the rain. And you know, everything's very colorful. There was a school in the background that had a mural. I just, you know, was able to catch it. You can see it blurred a little bit here because he was moving. But, but I just love all the, the color and the feeling of motion in that one. Peru is a very colorful place. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. So let's see. There's one of our does look bad because it's a good school. Yeah. This one, we, we stopped at a little uh, roadside restaurant and we were waiting for them to make a vegetarian meal for us, <laughs> which yes. took a while. I bet brownies. Brownies. <laughs> brownies. And so outside, uh, this little boy, well, this first of all, this llama, when he saw the people in our group, he spit at one of the men in the group, because that's what they do when they're upset. You know? And then this little boy came out, and obviously they were wonderful friends, and they, they hugged, and I just was able to get that that sweet moment, you know, tenderness with the boy and the llama. Happy to get that. That's great timing. Yeah, well, I had to take a lot of photos to get that, oh, yeah. that one. You know. Were you shooting first, or uh, you're just... No, that one I was just, you know, click, click, click. click. It, it was yeah. kind of like, yeah. I, I like it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, let's see. Very sweet. That mama has an amazing face. This one was at a, an old fort near uh, outside of Cusco. Um, this is up in the mountains, and we were we were going to tour this place. This is the place where. All of these big stones, they're huge, huge boulders, and they're put together without any mortar. You know, and who knows how they did it? You know? 
But anyway, this, these ladies were uh, herding their llamas, and um, they're all dressed in their native costume. And I just, um, I love the look of them, you know, standing there doing what they normally do with all these tourists wandering around. You know, so I'm happy to get that one. And let's see, the other two are up here. This one, we there's a, a huge island in uh, Peru on the border with Bolivia called Lake Titicaca. It's the deepest uh, lake in the world, and we traveled about three hours by boat to get to this island called Alantani, which is means the island of love. And the island itself is a is a mountain in the middle of the lake. So we, we hiked about halfway up and spent the night, and then before dawn, at four in the morning, we got up and hiked to the top of the mountain so that our shaman guides could uh, greet the dawn at this um, Pachatata temple, which means um, the Divine Father. There were two, two peaks. One was for the Divine Mother, Pachamama, and the other was Pachatata. And so he's playing his flute, and he's got on all of his his headgear and so forth, and they did this beautiful little mandala kind of thing on the ground and said their prayers. It was really, it was really sweet. And then the last one is this, uh, uh, the one in the entry. This was also awesome. on the island, and it was a little baby. Actually, that's a baby boy, and they they wear the boys wear these kind of hats. The babies wear these kind of hats with their white and then other colors, and the girls wear the same kind of hat, but they're brown with other colors. But he was just so sweet, and you know, obviously a very willing subject to be photographed. And again, I just fell in love with the colors in Peru, and the the people were so friendly. Thank you. So, that's it. Yeah, if you just want to introduce yourself and then... I have two. This is one of them. Okay. They almost hung outside. Well, either... No, that's not true. <laughs> either way, it would have worked. <laughs> um, all right, this is... My product that I did in class. It was a, uh, actually it was cut flowers in a bowl that was filled with water. And it was a bowl within a bowl. The in, inner bowl was movable. You can actually rotate it. And as it was rotating, I was taking a snapshot, and this is the result. Uh, it looked, I, I felt it turned out very well. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Always. <laughs> Always. So this is one of mine that, are, that is here. The other one... ...is... This, this was taken at Sondheim. These two ladies were dancing on stage. And this was an unusual shot for me because uh, I had no tripod. It was handheld with just whatever available light that was on stage. And it wasn't, it was, just there wasn't much light. It was very low. I didn't expect it to turn out, but obviously it did. And I was very pleased. And um, uh, I'm just happy that it's here. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'm Katie McGinnis, and I was originally a lawyer, and most recently I am an author. I've published a legal thriller called Terminal Ambition. 
and such a nice break from writing and promoting the book is working with Carolyn in her photography workshops and I've taken three of them. This is one that I took here in Fairfield. It was actually behind an old barn and those are catalpa beans and leaves that were on the ground and I really loved the way the light was hitting them and the shadows it was creating. You can see sort of the edges of the leaf it's created some shadows. This was when um, the ballet came from the Hancher Auditorium and they were performing here on the square in Fairfield. They built a platform. Did you? Yeah, wasn't that great? Um, and that was a close-up of some of the dancers' feet. I, I took so many pictures that day. It was really exciting. And then I think I've got some over here. Uh, Actually, I came to California from a small, I came to Iowa from a small valley in California, the San Inez Valley, which is full of cowboys and cattle, and I was back there visiting the spring, and a man had died, and they were auctioning off his collection of wagons, and he had many, many historic wagons, and this was a goat cart. And this was the detail that had been carved into the spokes of the wheel of the goat cart. And I was just fascinated by it. It's, you don't see things like that very often. No. And all spring, I was out in Washington, D.C. I was giving a speech at a conference of women lawyers. And uh, it was a very rainy, overcast day, and the rain had just stopped. But as a consequence of the rain during the day, people hadn't rented these bikes. And so the rack was just full of bikes. And Carolyn had asked our assignment for the week, Carolyn had asked us uh, to change our point of view. <clears throat> so instead of holding our camera at chest level and photographing whatever was straight ahead, to look at things a little bit differently. And so I got down, crouched down, and I was shooting up through that way you know, from a lower angle than usual. And of course, I was really attracted to the repeating pattern that you can see there. And of course, the way it narrows as it goes out into the distance. So that scene just really drew me. But it's, I, I have great pleasure in photography and great pleasure in working with Carolyn. She's a marvelous teacher. She has a way of being so positive about whatever print you take in and whatever the quality of the work of the different students, she finds something to praise. So it's always an enriching experience. My name is Lenora Boyle and I took Carolyn's first adult photography class here in Fairfield six years ago. We went out to Jefferson County Park, so my photo that's up is a reflection on the lake, or one of the ponds out there, and we threw flower petals, rose petals on the water. So the picture is a reflection of the tree limbs on the water, and what's in the water, and I used a macro lens, which you usually take, you know, for a close photo. It was a lot of, it was just a lot of fun. And, okay. There we go. Introduce yourself. And, uh, um, my name is Eleanor Shepard, and I live here in Fairfield. And I took Carolyn's photography course, it was about two years ago, and had not had much experience with photography, but wanted to learn more uh, how to take a good portrait, because I took a portrait of my son. This is my son, William. Uh, who just turned 12, and I want to get a little bit better at just taking family pictures and um, travel pictures, too. So she gave out an enormous amount of information in a short period of time, and this was an assignment where I didn't expect my son to come, and he ended up coming, and we were in a um, truck yard of old cars. So it was just kind of um, a bit of luck. He was playing on the truck and um, it was just kind of first timers uh, good luck because um, I 
did some of the things that she suggested, um, such as getting at different levels and treating your subject from different levels from below, eye level, and so forth. And um, we had good lighting, and I had a good camera, and I just caught this wonderful smile, and it just kind of happened. So, um, Excellent. Yeah. So. Um, I'm thrilled to have it up here tonight. It's very exciting. And, um, there are a lot of other wonderful pictures too. So.